Light modalities and low level laser therapy. The content within this lecture can be located within chapter 19 in the therapeutic modalities text by Chad Starkey and in chapter 20 within the therapeutic modalities, the art and science text by Kenneth Knight and David Draper. Light therapy is sometimes referred to as phototherapy, is a broad term that refers to the application of light by many devices for a variety of therapeutic purposes. Light therapy began with lasers in the 1970s. Light therapy is considered an emerging technology and there is a lot of confusion with the terminology. Terms and acronyms that are utilized to describe light therapy include phototherapy, cold laser, soft laser, low energy laser, low level laser therapy, low energy laser therapy, low intensity laser activated biostimulation, low power laser irradiation, low power laser therapy, low intensity laser, and monochromatic infrared energy, as if that's not confusing enough. It can be very easy for clinicians and professionals to become confused. Leaders in the field are calling for the use of terms such as light therapy and phototherapy to reduce confusion. Light therapy devices include lasers, light emitting diodes or LEDs, superluminous diodes or SLDs, fluorescent lamps, infrared lamps, ultraviolet lamps or UV lamps, dichronotic lamps, and very bright incandescent light bulbs. Light modalities have been utilized to treat orthopedic injuries, skin conditions, and psychological problems such as depression and seasonal affective disorder. The majority of the research has focused on lasers and LED light therapy, and therefore the content of this lecture has focused mostly on these two areas as well. Light therapy has started catching on as a feel-good treatment in different settings. Recently, a light therapy chamber was set up in the Paris airport that allowed travelers to be exposed to light therapy during downtime between flights. Traveling often results in a feeling of tiredness and even feelings of jet lag. These treatment bubbles emit white light from the lamps while travelers sit in relaxation chambers and sound systems play soothing music. It has been suggested that one hour of light therapy sessions per day for the first three days of a long haul trip will reduce the effects of jet lag and make the adjustment to a new time zone more comfortable for the traveler. Electromagnetic energy is the most abundant form of energy in the universe. Light is a form of electromagnetic energy, which has three general classifications, ultraviolet, visible, and infrared. Energy having a wavelength of greater than 780 nanometers, which occurs at the upper end of the visible light spectrum, is considered infrared energy. The ultraviolet spectrum is located in the area below the range of visible light below 380 nanometers. Laser is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The following terms and definitions further describe the characteristics of laser. Light is an electromagnetic radiation that can produce a visual sensation. Amplify to increase in size, volume, or significance. Stimulate to excite or invigorate to encourage or provoke something to grow, develop, or become more active. Emission, a flowing forth, such as the release of electrons from parent atoms. Radiation, the transfer of energy in the form of rays, waves, or particles, often from a central source, also called radiant energy. Laser is a device that transforms electromagnetic energy of various frequencies in or near the range of visible light into extreme, intense, small, nearly non-divergent beam of monochromatic radiation with all its waves in phase. Laser produces highly refined light in the ultraviolet, visible, or infrared range. Lasers consist of highly organized light photons that elicit physiological events in the tissue. Laser may be utilized for surgeries to cut tissue, destroy tissue, and to cauterize bleeding vessels. Laser can also be utilized for the purposes of diagnostics, imaging, and physical medication and rehabilitations. 
For therapeutic purposes, laser must be considered low-level laser therapy, sometimes referred to as LLLT. Low-level laser therapy does not normally cause tissue destruction. Lasers, LEDs, and superluminous diodes, or SLDs, utilized in rehabilitation are very different than the laser therapies that are utilized in other areas of medicine. The biggest difference is the amount of power that these lasers have. It is much lower for the rehabilitation purposes. The maximum output for these devices is less than 500 milliwatts. These low-level lasers are also referred to as cold lasers or soft lasers because they do not heat body tissues. Other examples of laser usage in common daily activities include the use of laser discs, supermarket scanning, tattoo removal laser surgeries, LASIK, superhero powers, which may not be as realistic outside the big screen, as well as many other examples. In 1917, Albert Einstein established the theoretical foundations for the laser in the paper on the quantum theory of radiation. Therefore, Mr. Einstein is credited with the invention and the theory for creating lasers. Lasers are classified by the FDA Center for Devices and Radiological Health based on the accessible emission limit. The accessible emission limit is the maximum permissible power level for each class, ranging from 1, which is minimal risk of causing harm, to 4, extreme risk. Safety is determined by the amount of energy applied to the leasing medium and the subsequent amount of energy released in the form of light. In other words, the power of the laser. The greater the power of the laser, the greater the potential danger. Class 1 lasers have a power of less than 0.5 milliwatts. There are both visible and non-visible laser beams in this class of lasers. These lasers are exempt from most control measures. The laser output is either safe to the human eye or is contained within the device in a manner that keeps the laser from escaping. No special labeling is required for a Class 1 laser. Class 2 lasers have a power of less than 1 milliwatt. The beams are visible in this class of laser. These are considered low power lasers with a visible light emission. The normal eye blink reflex, approximately 0.25 seconds, will protect the eye from direct contact with the laser output. Lasers must be labeled with caution, laser radiation, do not stare into beam. There is a laser class called 2A, which produces a visible laser production, such as those used in barcode scanners. Eye damage may occur if the laser enters the eye for more than a thousand seconds. Class 3 lasers are divided into Class 3A and Class 3B lasers. Class 3A lasers have a power up to 5 milliwatts. There are both visible and non-visible laser beams in this class of laser. Direct contact with the eye for short periods is not hazardous. Although viewing the laser through magnifying optics such as eyeglasses can present a hazard. These lasers must be labeled with caution, laser radiation, do not stare into beam or view directly with optical instruments. Class 3A lasers do not require that the patient and the clinician wear goggles during the treatment. Class 3B lasers have a power up to 500 milliwatts. There are both visible and non-visible laser beams in this class of laser. Direct contact of the laser output with the eyes can result in damage. These lasers must be labeled with danger, visible and or invisible laser radiation. Avoid direct exposure to beam. The patient and the clinician and anyone in the immediate area must don goggles during the treatment. Class 4 lasers have a power greater than 500 milliwatts. They are both visible and non-visible laser beams in this class of laser. Direct or indirect contact with the skin or eyes can be hazardous. Toxic airborne contaminants may also be produced from the laser. The output can create a fire hazard. This laser must be labeled with danger, visible and or invisible laser radiation. Avoid eye and skin exposure to direct or scattered beam. Laser light is very different than normal light. Laser light is transmitted through space as waves. The light contains tiny energy packets called photons. A photon is the basic unit of light. 
Each photon has a definite amount of energy depending on its frequency and wavelength, which produces the color. Particles are photons that carry different energy levels. This energy level corresponds to its respective frequency of color. Photons may be transmitted, reflected, or absorbed. Energy may cause heat, oscillations, ionization, or molecular breakdown. The use of therapeutic lasers is strictly controlled in the United States. This modality is frequently used in other countries such as Canada and Europe. In the United States, therapeutic lasers have a wavelength between 650 nanometers to 1200 nanometers, with the most common wavelengths ranging between 600 and 1000 nanometers. The light spectrum encompasses ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light energy. Electromagnetic radiation possessing a wavelength between 380 and 780 nanometers forms the spectrum of visible white light. White light is a combination of seven colors, each representing a different wavelength on the spectrum. These seven colors ranked from the shortest to the longest wavelength are violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. This is a table describing the different wavelengths in nanometers, the color range of the beam, and the depth of penetration in millimeters for the different forms of laser. Laser are often referred to by their color, such as a red laser or a violet laser. This practice is imprecise and is better to describe the laser by the wavelength rather than by their color. There are three major properties of laser, coherence, monochromicity, and culmination. Coherence is something that is logically ordered or integrated, a quality of electromagnetic waves that have the same wavelength and a fixed phase relationship. A wavelength with the coherence means that it has identical phase and time relationships with other similar waves or that all photons of laser light are the same wavelength. As we can see with this picture, the red and green and blue waves have different phases and time relationships, and therefore they are incoherent. In the next example, we see photons that have the same time relationship, but the phases are opposite in direction, and therefore they too still represent incoherence. In this last example, all protons of laser light are the same wavelength, all with identical phase and time relationships, and therefore they are coherent. Monochromicity is defined as having a single frequency and therefore a single color, if it is in the light spectrum. In other words, all of the light energy has the same wavelength and therefore has the same color. Laser light is culminated because it diverges very little as it travels through space. The protons move parallel with very minimal divergence, which means that the beam is highly concentrated. Due to the culmination of the laser beam, it can penetrate up to 5 centimeters in human tissue. As of October 2012, the FDA has granted the pre-market notification for the application of low-level laser therapy for four clinical applications. There are currently four approved treatments in which laser can be utilized. Number one, a temporary relief for minor chronic neck and shoulder pain of musculoskeletal origin. Number two, the temporary relief of hand and wrist pain associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. Number three, the temporary relief of pain associated with IT band syndrome. And number four, the temporary relief of pain caused by osteoarthritis in the hand. There is some evidence about the effectiveness of laser to treat tendinopathies, low back pain, nonspecific joint disorders, sprained ankles, epicondylitis, and wound healing, but none of the evidence has been fully established. Therefore, as a clinician, it is important that we utilize laser for the approved uses. If you decide to use laser for one of these non-approved usages, you may be opening yourself up to liability and potential legal issues down the road. 
I need to reiterate that LLT can stand for many different things, such as low-level laser therapy, low-laser light therapy, low-level light therapy. In this class, we will use it for low-level laser therapy. Light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, are special types of semiconductor diodes that emit visible light when an electrical current passes through it. As electricity passes through it, the diode gives off energy in the form of photons. The wavelength and the energy given off, and thus the color of the emitted light, is determined by the chemical composition of the doping materials. LED lights have a depth of penetration of 2 to 5 millimeters. Since both semiconductor-based lasers and the diode devices both used in light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, and superluminous diodes, or SLDs, one might think that the light derived from the two devices is the same. Unfortunately, this is not true. It is important to examine the difference between laser and LED. We will start with laser. In order for light therapy to be classified as laser, it must be coherent, monochromatic, and culminated, which means that the beam does not diverge. It will have a high output power that is around or less than 500 milliwatts. Lasers have the potential to cause eye and tissue damage. And finally, the depth of penetration for a laser is approximately around 2 centimeters. With light-emitting diodes, or LEDs, they are incoherent, monochromatic, and unculminated, which means that the beam diverges some. LEDs have a low output power of less than 90 milliwatts. LEDs won't damage eyes and have a depth of penetration of approximately 2 to 5 millimeters. Laser and non-laser devices vary in the depth of penetration, the type of tissue affected, and the type of molecules within the tissue that are affected. Tissues that will absorb radiation the most include water, organic molecules such as amino acids, nucleic acid bases, hemoglobin, and melanin account for the absorption rates of radiation in body tissues. Skin color may play an important role in the treatment of a patient. The skin pigmentation may play a role in how much light is absorbed by the tissues and to what depth the light will penetrate during treatment. Melanin is a pigment that contributes to skin coloring and it tends to absorb light in the visible spectrum really well. Therefore, patients with darker skin may absorb more light in the cutaneous layers, preventing the light from penetrating to deeper tissues. In addition, the production of melanin is triggered by light in the near ultraviolet range. This can result in a darkening of the skin or scar tissue as more melanocytes are produced. Photobiomodulation is the act of modifying biological processes with light. Light therapy or laser therapy stimulates tissues in a way that modifies pain and or modifies the healing process. According to the researcher Eels and colleagues, light therapy restores normal cellular function. When light is absorbed by tissues, it excites atoms into higher levels of rotational movement which results in a minor thermal effect. It can alter the electron bonds within the molecules, causing structural changes, and it can stimulate mitochondria to function normally. All of these effects were especially seen in patients with chronic disease, such as diabetes. The effects of light therapy are still being explored, but what we currently know is Light therapy is absorbed by the mitochondria and the cell membrane, and then is stored as ATP. This helps to restore normal cellular function and is utilized in synthesizing DNA, RNA, proteins, and enzymes. Light therapy also aids in the tissue healing and the regeneration of chronic wounds. In addition, light therapy helps to reduce pain and it may regulate levels of prostaglandins and decrease nerve conduction velocity. Currently, light therapy is frequently used clinically for the following purposes, wound care and tissue healing, inflammatory conditions, and pain reduction. The indications for the use of light therapy include wound healing, fracture healing, 
musculoskeletal pain, myofascial pain or fibromyalgia, trigger points, inflammatory conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, and the FDA-approved conditions. The contraindications for the use of light therapy include cancer, eyes, throat, and testicle application, blood clots, over a fetus during pregnancy, and areas of hemorrhaging. Precautions include medications, antihistamines, oral contraceptives, NSAIDs, tetracycline, and antidepressants can increase the sensitivity of the skin to light therapy. In addition, we have to be careful of tattoo ink. The ink may become depigmented when light therapy is applied. If light therapy is used properly, it is relatively safe. You can apply it over metal implants and pacemakers. Light therapy can treat a variety of different skin sites, including lesions, wounds, areas of pain, nerve roots and trunks, trigger points and acupressure points, lymphatic vessels, and blood vessels. Most lasers are a single laser probe that is utilized to deliver a specific wavelength to tissues. However, in recent years, cluster laser probes deliver light on a specific wavelength to tissue. For optimum delivery of light therapy, the probe should be in contact with the skin to minimize divergence and reflection. The treatment area and the probe should be cleaned prior to and following all treatments. If there is an open wound, the probe may be held close, less than one centimeter to the wound without touching it. Some clinicians will place a sterile transparent film over the open wound so that the probe can be placed in contact with the damaged tissue. Unlike ultrasound, there really isn't a need to move the probe around during treatment. Rather, the probe should be held still on the skin for the optimal treatment. The cluster head is the best option for treating larger areas. When a cluster head is not available, a single probe can be used in multiple ways. First is the point application, which is where a single area will be treated using the wand. The second is a sequential application to multiple areas of tissue, called a grid application. This occurs by moving the head across the area like a grid pattern. We can treat small areas, usually one centimeter squared segment at a time. The last technique involves treating the wand like an ultrasound head in a technique called scanning or wanding. Scanning or wanding is not recommended as they do not provide enough time and contact with the light to be a therapeutic treatment. The parameters utilized for light therapy are not all adjustable. The wavelength is between 600 and 1,000 nanometers. The longer the wavelength, the deeper it will penetrate. The output power is measured in watts or milliwatts. The average power is the output multiplied by the duty cycle. And the intensity is the watts divided by the unit of area of tissue exposed, or watts per centimeter squared. The dosage depends on three factors, the average output power, the time of light exposure, and the treatment area. These factors are represented in the following formula. Dosage, which is represented by joules per square centimeter, is equal to the average power in milliwatts multiplied by the treatment time in minutes, which is then divided by the treatment area in square centimeters. The power output of a laser is fixed, and the only way to alter the dosage is to alter the time of the application. Treatment time must be computed for each specific device because the output differs so much among devices. Treatment time is computed from the total output of the specific device. This table represents the treatment application dosages that are recommended for different conditions. Laser penetration is a function of the wavelength and power. Although wavelength is probably the most important factor in determining depth of penetration, there must also be a driving force. The driving force is the power or amount of energy that is being applied. In this table, we can see that for different conditions, we are given recommendations for the amount of joules that should be administered at each treatment point and the total dosage of the treatment when using the grid application to the area. For example, if we were to treat an acute stress fracture, 
Per point of application, we would want to use 7 to 8 joules with a total dosage of 25 to 30 joules for the treatment. In another example, if we were to treat a chronic ankle sprain, per point of application, we would want to use 5 to 6 joules with a total dosage of 35 to 45 joules for the treatment. This table is a further recommendation for the treatment dosages for specific conditions. For example, when treating a muscle strain, using a treatment of 1 to 2 joules per point of application would be the most appropriate use of light therapy. There are a lot of uses for light therapy currently on the market and it's making its way into the rehabilitation arena. The picture on this slide is of an LED light therapy mask that can be used at home. This mask boasts about having seven color functions of non-invasive light therapy for anti-aging, removing fine lines and wrinkles, collagen production, and skin pigmentation correction. It can help consumers to avoid spending hundreds of dollars per month on serums, anti-aging wrinkle creams, and spa treatments with this mask. LED light therapy is proven to improve skin and minimize pores so bacteria does not enter or spread. So what exactly do these colors mean? Each color along the LED spectrum penetrates a different skin layer. Blue light therapy only penetrates the superficial tissues, whereas red light therapy can penetrate a little bit deeper. This is a helpful table that describes the effects of the different light colors. We can see that red light therapy can help produce more ATP and can increase DNA and RNA activity in addition to having an effect on skin conditions. Blue light therapy can help remove acne and tighten skin. Green light therapy can help heal wounds, remove sebaceous cysts, and decrease hyperpigmentation. Purple light therapy can decrease wrinkles and increase cell regeneration. Orange or yellow light therapy can stimulate the production of red blood cells, smooth scars, and treat abnormal skin pigmentation. The color cyan is good to reduce swollen capillaries. And finally, white light is effective in treating wounds, acne, regulating mood, and with the transdermal absorption of nutrients to the dermis level of the skin. Here's another list of the different uses for light therapy. Most of the light therapy is utilized in skin therapy in dermatology clinics, but it's becoming more popular in the rehabilitation setting. Please complete quiz number 12 over chapter 19. It will be on Blackboard. It will be worth 10 points and you will have 10 minutes to complete the questions. During our lab day, please meet in Island Hall, room 179, which is the Athletic Training Center. Please make sure to bring a pen and perhaps notes from class. It is important that you arrive on time for lab as there are a lot of activities that are planned, and this is your opportunity to have hands-on time with the modalities that have been previously discussed. Please remember the dress code, which includes t-shirts, no tank tops, shorts, no jeans, and tennis shoes, no hats are permissible in the Athletic Training Center. And remember, you will be sent home if you're not dressed properly. If you are sent home, you will receive a zero for the lab.